So the first thing that we're going to do is, is pull up the Zarvia website uh, by searching uh, zarvia.com. And now we can see the Zarvio homepage. And from here, you can either log into your Zarvio Field Manager accounts with this button in the top right hand corner, or you can find the, the Create Your Account button uh, just over here. So if we click on this, uh, we'll then pull up the registration page where you can create your Zarvio Field Manager accounts. You'll have to fill in a few details, such as your first name, such as your first, last, and your email address. Uh, so I'll enter that there. And we'll also, we'll also enter uh, your, your phone number as well. Uh, so once you've done that, you can press uh, continue. You'll then enter have to set up a password. Uh, so make sure it's a strong password. And then you can uh, you can you need to read and accept the terms and conditions, which can be found at this link here. So just tick the box once you've read them. And then you press uh, create Zavio accounts. I've actually already created an account under this email address, so I'm just going to jump across that account now that I've already created, uh, which which looks like this. And once you've uh, created your account, you'll then be invited to uh, to add some fields to your farm. So there's three ways in which you can add your fields to your farm. You can you can use the the map, and you can select fields uh, from the map using predefined field boundaries on the map, or you can draw your fields manually on the map. You can upload shape files as well, and a shape file is a file that contains information about your field, such as your field name or your field boundaries, and you can get the, a shape file from, uh, from places like other uh, file management systems. You can also bring in uh, your field boundaries uh, using the My John Deere data link. So if you're a My John Deere user, you can import your fields using this link as well. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the the, uh, the the map function to add my fields. So I'm going to click here. So then uh, to uh, so then to add your fields, you firstly search for your location of your farm by entering a postcode or a, or a town name. So that's what I'm going to do here. So then I come to the location of my farm and you can find your fields from above on the map. Uh, so then to add your fields to your farm, you just click on the fields to add them. So I'm gonna add two fields here. You can easily rename them uh, by clicking in this box. So I'm gonna to plan to add winter barley in this field. So I'm just gonna call the field winter barley. And in this field, I'm gonna to plan to add winter wheat. So again, I'm just gonna call this field winter wheat, but you can and call your fields whatever you like. And you can also then edit uh, the shape of your field really easily by clicking the edit shape button. So what we can do is we can simplify the shape of your field really easily by using this, uh, this, this bar at the bottom. And then we can correct the, uh, the shape of your field if it's, if it's not quite perfect. So now we've done this, uh, we, can, we can save uh, the new shape. And once you're happy with the fields that you've added and the name and the, the names that you've called them, you can click save. <clears throat> so, so now we can see I've got three fields in total on my farm, a field of all seed rape, which I added earlier on, and some fields where I'm going to add winter barley and winter wheat. So to add a crop, you click on your field and you click the, the assign crop button at the bottom. So to assign a crop to a field, you firstly have to uh, choose which crop you want to add from a list of all of the available crops within Field Manager. So you can see that we're covering off the majority of the cropping uh, that you may have. In this example, I'm going to choose winter wheat. So the first thing that you have to do is select the variety of the crop that you're adding. And all of the registered varieties in the UK will be in this list, but you can search it as well. So I'm going to search for Skyfall. And you can also change your seeding dates and the date that you drilled it and your yield expectation as well at this step. If I press continue, I can then choose what my previous crop was. The previous crop on this field was, was another winter wheat. So this is second wheat. So I'm gonna leave that as a winter wheat. And you can also change the tillage system that you're using on this field. So this information that I've entered here is, is really important because this is the information that's used to drive the crop data modeling and provide them agronomic insights. So the more accurate the information is that you add here, the more valuable them insights will be to you. So I'll hit save crop. 
And what we can see now is in my field of winter wheat, I can see that I now have a crop added to this field. And straight away, I can start to see some of the, uh, the insights coming through that field manager has to offer. So straight away, I can see an overview of my, of my fields and my crops. I can see the variety of the crop and the seeding dates here, the size of my field. And I can also see already uh, the, the prediction of the current growth stage of that crop. If I, if I look further down the list, I can see that I've actually got a, a timing alert for fertilizer application uh, based on the growth stage of the crop uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and some weather information coming through already. Uh, you, can, you can access more weather information and more detailed historic weather data at the weather tab at the top up here. Uh, so now that we've set up some fields and some crops on this farm, I will now show you how you can use the key features in Field Manager. So I've spoken about the biomass maps, the zones, uh, the spray timer and the zone spray functionality. Uh, but how does this all come together? So the field status page, which is what we're on now, which is like a home page, provides the place where you can either see or access these features. So we're going to look at how the status page will look in the spring. So in a few months time. So to do this, I'm actually going to go on to a, a demo version of the platform which shows you what it looked like in the spring, as obviously we're currently in January. Uh, so now I've moved across to the, uh, to the, to the demo version. I can show you uh, more of the agronomic insights. Uh, so firstly, we can see here uh, that we're currently in the spring, we're at the beginning of May, and we can see that we're starting uh, to see the, the risk likelihood for disease and pests on the field. And this is shown over here under the status details on the crop health in a traffic light system. So we can see the overall score for disease here is red, which is saying it's a high risk likelihood for disease. And we can also see which relevant diseases are driving this disease score, in which case, in this case, it's, it's septoria, as it's red, meaning it's high risk for septoria. And you can see there's currently low risk for ice spot and brown rust on this field as well. Also on this data page, we can see that the biomass maps are available. So we can we can look at the live in-season biomass map uh, from the satellite data, uh, and we can observe the the variability uh, of of biomass and green leaf uh, in the field, where areas are more dense and have grown away better compared to areas that are, are thinner, potentially because they're close to the headlands or there's some some drainage or or flooding, uh, flooding issues in, in parts of the field. And we can also swap and see the power zone map, which is the historic yield potential map. So this is using the historic biomass data to show you kind of uh, that yield potential of the field. And you can compare these maps to each other very easily on this uh, status page. <clears throat> so also on this status page, uh, you can see the growth stage tracking in more detail. So you can see the current, uh, you can see the current disease, uh, the current growth stage prediction, which is at growth stage 32. So just approaching T1. And you can see the, the forecast uh, for growth stage as well. <clears throat> From this page, you can also create observations of growth stage. Uh, so if I click on the modify growth stage button, if I've just walked my crop and I've, and I've observed that the crop is at a certain growth stage, I can then input this information here and Field Manager will take that information into consideration uh, and recalibrate the, the, crop growth, uh, the crop growth models. So what we can also do at this homepage is add additional tasks. So I can see on this field that my crop is at growth stage 32, so approaching T1. I can also see that the disease risk likelihood is high. So what, I, what I'm thinking then is I'm probably going to want to go and check my field, consult with my agronomist and decide whether it's time for that, uh, for that first application of fungicide. So, uh, so say I've, I've decided that I'm going to make that application, I can then add this task within Zavia Field Manager. So I click the Add Task button down here and I can choose to add a crop protection application, but you can also add other tasks from this point as well. So from here, firstly, we, we select which day we're going to plan this application on. 
And you can do this by, by using the, uh, the spray weather indicator on this page as well. So green is indicating the weather is good at certain times of the day, and red is indicating that the weather is poor and you're not going to be able to spray. So firstly, select which day you're going to spray on when you're planning that application. And then you're going to build your tank mix. And you can do this by looking at the list, uh, by looking at the product list where all of the registered products in the UK sit. And in this example, I'm going to choose Revstar. And then you press next. At this point, then uh, you're then uh, setting the dose, uh, the dose rate of this of this product. Uh, and for a flat rate application, you, you enter your dosage. Uh, so in this case, I'm putting one liter per hectare for a flat rate. But from here as well, you can also toggle to create a variable rate application map, which we spoke about earlier on. So I can tog toggle between flat and variable rates. So now you can see that Zario has split up my field into five different zones, where zone one has, uh, where zone one is picking out the areas of the field that has high spire mass and most green leaf, down to zone five, where my crop is the thinnest. So you can see here now that I can vary the dose of my fungicide across these zones. So in this case, a uh, uh, dose rate of 1.2 litres per hectare down to 0 0.8 litres per hectare. So then I click next. So on the final page, you can see an overview of the variable application map uh, for your field. And you can also see uh, the tank recipe as well. So you can see that Zarvio is giving you an indication of how much water you need and how much of the product you need in order to cover that field. Zarvio knows how big your field is. So then we'll click save. <clears throat> so that task is now planned within the system. And when you've actually made that application on your field, you can click that that task is complete. So what then happens is uh, Zarvio Field Manager will then take that application into consideration and it will show you the effects of that application on your crop health uh, with the traffic light system. So if we look at the disease, uh, the disease risk likelihood scores, we can see that the the disease scores are now purple. And purple means that uh, your crop is then protected as a result of that application. And it'll also give you an indication of when that effect is reducing uh, as the, the colors will turn from purple to green, orange, and then red again, as it's coming up to time for your next application. <clears throat> so, so the last, thing that I wanted to show you on this live demo was how you share your farms and you collaborate with, with other team members. So to do that, you enter your settings in the top right hand corner where your name will be. And then you can find an option where you can share your fields, uh, share, share your field, share access to your farm. So from here, you enter the email address of the registered user, field manager. So this may be your agronomist or spray contractor. You enter the email address and then you can choose whether you want to share the share access to the farm at just a, a viewer level so just being able to view it but not edit anything or actually be able to edit and update everything just like you can on your farm so then once you've done that and if you have access to more than one farm you can then utilize the cross farm dashboard and the cross farm dashboard can be found in the top left hand corner where you find a list of all the farms you've access to you find the cross farm dashboard option and this that brings you to this page here so like i said before the cross farm dashboard is useful for managing uh, time and workload especially if you have multiple farms in one account and you can analyze which farms and fields need your attention first by applying a whole range of filters <clears throat> 